Hi everybody, welcome back. In today's episode of the Super Duty Build, I'm going to get started putting the clear glass on the door frames. But before I get started, I noticed that the tires on my pits were going flat and the airplane was sinking lower and lower. And it got to the point where the wheel pant was sitting on top of the chalk and I couldn't get the chalk out. So I had to put some air in the tires. Unfortunately, to do that, I have to take all of the wheel pants off uh, just to be able to get to the valve stem. But anyway, I put some air in the tires. I got to put the wheel pants back on and the surgery is now complete. Speaking of doors, I added my second door to the aft storage compartment. And the reason I didn't have this door on before is because if I open this up here, you can see the rivets that hold the, the, the door or the box to the, the bulkhead. And this rivet in this rivet, I, I didn't want to put one in there obviously because there's a, a uh, receptacle in the back there that this, this, gets, this goes into and turns. But when I was riveting his box on, like an idiot, I put a rivet right here. So I actually had to drill that rivet out, put the receptacle on here, and then rivet, it, rivet these two rivets on. And then once I did that, uh, I was ready to add the door. So now I have both doors in the cargo compartment. They are done. Now on to the airplane doors. The first thing I wanted to do was get the glass out and ready and remove the tape from all along the perimeter. Now that I have all of the masking tape removed along the edge, uh, this is what's left. And all I've done is place the door or the glass on the frame. And you'll notice there's quite a bit of, of overhang here, which is good. That's exactly what I want because that lets me be able to fit it and trim off what I need. I've also opened up this little area here with a paper because there is a molding in the door that's flat right here. So as I put the door or the glass on the frame, I want to make sure that the uh, flat part on the, the glass is centered on this uh, bracket that's behind it. Now the next step I like to do is I like to start with the top of the door. And what I wanna do is I wanna make sure there's a nice straight cut on the top of the glass because this goes up against the hinge. Now on your doors, yours may be trimmed a little bit long and yours may sit over the hinge like this, in which case you can just mark a line on your, your glass to where to cut it right below the hinge. Now on these doors here, the way they come from the factory, if I center the door with this flat part over the bracket, it just, they, they trimmed it perfectly. The top is actually a nice straight cut and it's cut to the, the right place where it just fits next to that hinge. So I don't really have to do anything on the top. Really all I need to do is center this up here, verify that I have a good overlap all the way around, which I do, and then I can mark and drill my holes. Well, there's no point in reinventing the wheel. I can take a look at my cruiser and take a look at where I've put the rivets in here. I do know that on the top, I only have one rivet in the middle and then of course these brackets that go in a corner will hold the glass on. I just didn't find any reason to put any more up here because it, it just wouldn't do anything structurally. It, it's fine how it is. Uh, and of course the less holes you drill in the glass, the less chance there is for cracks later on. And then you can see aside from the brackets, I have one, two, three, four rivets going down. Now one of the things I've started to think about is do I wanna use rivets in here or do I wanna thread and tap the aluminum and I can, I can use those same three millimeter screws again. This square tubing is definitely thick enough to tap. Um, I don't know, I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. You know, it would be easier if I ever had to replace the glass but then again, these are pretty soft aluminum rivets too that are super easy to drill out. Maybe I just use the rivets. But anyway, I guess you could drill it and tap it if you wanted to. I've marked the center of the top bar and so I'm drilling that one hole for the one rivet that goes in the very top. If you look on here, I have one dot, two dots, three dots here marked where I want to drill for rivets. 
So with those marked on the center line there, I dr I'll drill those and that's the back of the door. So I'll probably do the back, then I'll go do the front and then I'll just go around the bottom and it'll be drilled and done. aft edge of the door is done and now I'm working on the front and I want four rivets in the front. So what I've done is I've measured from this hole to this hole and it's 600 millimeters and I want four rivets so I just divided 600 by five and every 120 millimeters I made a mark on here and so I can move the glass back in the proper position and drill those holes. Bottom row, done. Now, in case you're curious, what I did was I started right here, right in the middle of here, and then every 110 millimeters is where I put the holes. So it gives it a nice even spacing around the bottom. So all of the holes for the rivets that hold the glass to the frame are drilled. I think the next step is to match drill these holes here so that uh, all of these angled pieces came, can be fit. Now the first thing I need to do to get all these pieces ready to install is polish the edges. And I am using my Scotch-Brite wheel to do this and it makes a real, real nice smooth edge all around these pieces. Now even though I used a Scotch-Brite wheel to get a nice polished smooth edge, I still have a sharp 90 degree corner on here. And so I take all my pieces and I go over them with sandpaper and I really, I'm really just hitting the edge to kind of round off that sharp corner. And I do it for two reasons. One, it just feels a lot better. It doesn't feel sharp, it's nice and smooth. And it also helps the paint to adhere around this corner. If you just have a 90 degree corner, it's easy for the paint to chip off. And to show you what I mean, let's go to the whiteboard. All right, let's look at two sheets of aluminum here. Now we're looking at this from the side, or it could be our little door brackets, but you'll notice on this one, it's got a nice polished edge, but it's got a 90 degree corner. What's gonna happen is when you paint this, the paint's gonna kind of sit on here like this. And if you can tell from my wonderful drawing here, you've got a really, really thin edge here where the paint meets that corner. And that is where the, your paint is gonna start chipping around here. But if you take this sheet here and we kind of round it off these corners or broke that 90 degree edge, the paint will have a more of a tendency to flow around it like this, which is much stronger for the paint and can help prevent chips. Plus, you just don't have this sharp 90 degree corner here that can scratch your skin or it just doesn't feel good. A nice round corner like this just feels much better and I think it looks better. And I also think it helps prevent chips on the paint. With all of these parts prepped now, it's time to get them match drilled onto the door. And I've already drilled two holes in this one, and all I do now is just carefully drill through the Lexan, and that will open up all of the holes for the brackets. Well, that was pretty easy. All of the holes are drilled in all of the corner brackets. And that only took about 10 minutes to do. Now, if I'm looking at the rivets here, we have, these are soft aluminum rivets. And these ones are 5.30 seconds. These are for the doors. And these ones are 1 8 and they are for the rear side windows. So these are the rivets that we'll use for all around the perimeter here which means in the aluminum brackets, I need to drill these out for 5.30 seconds. And then uh, same with the holes in the frame and then the holes in the glass, 
just like we did on our windshield and top window, the holes in the glass will be a little bit bigger than 530 seconds. And that gives this, this Lexan here room to, to contract and expand in the, the different temperatures. And that's what prevents cracks around your rivets. So I guess the next step is to take it apart and open up all the holes to the correct size. Now I'm just opening up all of these holes to 530 seconds. Once all of the holes are deburred, the door frame will be complete. And here you can just see the soft aluminum 530 seconds rivet fits nicely in the holes. And so now this is complete and ready to go. Of course, I also have to open up the holes in those four corner brackets to 530 seconds. And for that, I am using my handy dandy drill press. All right, well, this door is pretty much complete. The next step, obviously, would be to put it on the fuselage and trim the glass around the perimeter. But before I do that, I'm going to take the passenger side door and get it caught up to where this door is at. So I have both doors the same. I'll be able to install both doors on the fuselage measure and trim the edges. That will be the next video. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you do find these videos helpful, I do appreciate it. If you just take a second, reach down there with your mouse and hit that thumbs up button. Otherwise, we'll see you again on the next episode.